It was time for a last word from Jesus, some final instructions, some clarity about the task before the disciples. We last experienced Jesus in the Gospel according to Matthew as we listened to him telling the women, women who had gone to prepare the body for burial, don't be afraid. Go tell the disciples to go to Galilee where they too will see me. Eleven remaining disciples made their way to a mountain in Galilee where the living Christ had summoned them. The disciples fell before this being in front of them in reverence and awe, honoring and worshiping the living Christ, though some doubted what they thought they were seeing when they experienced something before them looking like Jesus. Then came the big message for Jesus' disciples, the final task Jesus would set before them, a passing of the torch, if you will, so that the work Jesus had done would continue spreading through all the world. As Christians, we think of Jesus' ministry as a really big deal, and it was, and also it wasn't. Jesus came challenging the status quo, calling religious leaders, really all leaders, actually all people, to follow a different way of life, letting go of petty triviality, reframing power struggles and structures, rejecting life-depleting rules, rules often holding injustice in place for many, while those with power reap the benefits of an intractable system firmly and securely embedding injustice into society. The good news The really big news is that Jesus offered another way of being in the world, taking his followers down a path where all people mattered, where all could be free, find their true worth, discover their own identity as child of God, and live into God's call on their lives. In the socially stratified world of Jesus' day, where major groups of people were outsiders with no way of possibly becoming insiders, this was a big deal, a really big, very, very big deal. On the other hand, Jesus' ministry really wasn't that big of a deal at all. In fact, at the time of his death, Jesus' ministry, Jesus' following were small and rather insignificant. Tons of itinerant preachers and teachers similar to Jesus were roaming the countryside and towns, proclaiming their messages and gathering a following as they went. Most of these people we've never heard about, nor does anyone really recall their particular messages. Imagine, I imagine, when the disciples had an experience of a risen Christ, it really got their attention. As far as I know, they had never had an experience like this before any time in their lives before this moment. But perhaps this wasn't the biggest surprise for them that day on a mountain in Galilee. I wonder what they thought about Jesus telling them, now you are to go into all the world, baptizing people from every nation, inviting people from every race, tribe, and group to follow this new way of being in the world, to come on into the inner circle of your group, no matter who they were, where they lived, or the road that they had been traveling up to this point. Teach all of these people to carry out my work, doing all the things that I have been doing, living their lives just the way that I have lived mine. Oh, And by the way, Jesus said, just know I'm with you always. Wherever my call takes you, whatever is happening, until the end of time, goodbye. At this moment, the continuation of Jesus' ministry was hanging in the balance, the future uncertain. Everything he had done, all of his teaching, speaking truth to power, touching hearts and turning lives around, transformational experiences, could have ended right there, touching only those who had had a personal encounter with this itinerant preacher-teacher who lived his life calling people to a new way. Jesus' ministry was pretty small, a very local movement in a particular place and time, 
touching a relatively small number of people, often people on the fringes of society, usually people with no inherent power to make things happen or to take a movement forward. But this living, breathing Jesus left a bold, clear legacy beginning to take root in the lives of those who knew him the best. His spirit lingered in their hearts, the hearts of his followers, stirring powerfully within them until they embraced his life and work so fully, until they were transformed so completely, they picked up where Jesus left off, empowered to take this new way of being everywhere in order to transform the whole world. Just about a year ago, there was a death in the Fort Street family. And in the intervening months, many in our faith community have passed from this life on earth. We have experienced great loss and grief here at Fort Street, and still we feel the gaps left in our community and the holes left in our heart. With these losses also has come a great legacy left to us. And in recent days this week, I've reflected on the legacies that these saints have left to us. These down-to-earth, genuinely real friends showed us deep trust in God, true love for community, as each in their own ways with infectious smiles, twinkling, dancing eyes, daring bravado, hearty greetings demanding a response, sturdy, strong handshakes, well-timed humor, and gentle teasing, which put others at ease, welcomed and drew in all who entered those doors. We have been given a legacy of profound faith, sometimes a crazy, unbelievable faith in action that engaged the realities of life, and in some cases, very harsh realities of life, with good humor and grace, with kindness and deep empathy. As the spiritual depth of the lives of these saints was taken to the streets, following Jesus, walking the talk, risking new things, finding companions and community along the way to stand together, sharing laughter and drying tears. These saints taught us about straightforward conversation, cutting to the chase and confronting with love, holding no grudges, ready to move on, taking on injustice, speaking truth to power, standing firm with the determination to keep on keeping on, and a generosity of spirit that kept on giving until others could embrace a better life. They showed us how to engage life richly and exuberantly through fierce loyalty to family and friendship, lively conversation, arts, culture, traveling, writing, you name it. In tough circumstances, they taught us to use imaginative intelligence and love creative energies and hard work to solve problems in all kinds of places, to change the world for the better, to care genuinely for all the earth and its creatures beginning in the heart of Detroit. These keen, curious, inquisitive minds intent on making learning a lifetime endeavor passed on to us wisdom gained through the years, whether their years were many or perhaps only a few. These adventurous spirits, sometimes living outside the lines, had depth of character, peaceful souls, and gentle spirits that knew how to relax, embrace happiness, and enjoy life knowing someone will indeed see you through no matter what comes your way or how forceful it might be.